Well, unfortunately, we're back with the 1987 Suzuki LT250R. So, <laughs> last video, we uh, rebuilt this whole thing. New top end, uh, went through the transmission, made sure everything was good, and uh, put that missing bolt back in the side of the transmission, thinking that would fix our shifting problem on this thing. So, cases were split, everything was gone through, everything was put back together and I thought this thing was fixed for good. Took it for the first ride, and it still slipped out of second gear. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we gotta tear this thing all back down. Everything needs to come apart. Whole engine needs to come out, cases need to be split. So we found a used 1987 Suzuki LT250R transmission on eBay, and the guy said it was from a running, good shifting machine. And I asked multiple times, I said, does everything look good? He said, yes. And I said, are you sure it shifted good? He said, yes. So we're gonna put that used transmission in here with the new drum, with new shift forks. Everything should be good from a good running driving machine. And hopefully that fixes our issue with this. So I figured instead of uh, replacing, you know, one piece at a time and rebuilding this like 20 different times, Let's just replace everything inside the case and see if that fixes our problem. Let's see what happens here. All right, let's start by uh, draining the oil. See what that looks like. Last time we checked, it wasn't milky. Yeah, it's brand new oil in there. So we'll drain that out and we'll probably save that if it's good. And we're gonna check for metallic flakes too, see if something's rubbing in there getting ground down. I looked at the diagrams when rebuilding this thing and everything was perfect. We'll start by draining the coolant and we're gonna save that because it's brand new. Next is the oil. Oil drain bolt is right there in the center of the cases, so let's get that out. Yeah, you can tell there's not uh, not many hours on that oil. Looks pretty good. While we're letting that oil drain, let's get the chain off of here. Chain and sprocket. Just a little C-clip here. There we go. Let that dangle, just like that. All right, get the pipe off of here. Already had the springs off. Take the plug out. Look how nice and brown that plug is. It looks black on camera, but it's really nice and dark brown. All right, taking a look at the oil, there's definite metallic flakes in there. You guys look real close. You can see the metallic floating around in there. So we're not gonna reuse this oil. You can see some of those pieces. See those little shiny pieces in there? Kind of hard to see. But there's definite metallic flakes. 
So something is either rubbing or wearing out in the transmission. All right, hose is coming out. This engine is pretty easy to uh, get out of here. Out of the frame, it doesn't take a whole lot. This one right there. There's not a whole lot to it. The engine mounts off. So far I'm like 10 minutes in. Not too bad. Swing arm nut coming off. There's that nut. Pound that through. Everything was greased up, so the second time's a lot easier. All right, I think the engine can come out. All the engine mounts are off. Everything's disconnected. It took me about 15 minutes, if that. Alright, engine out, got it around the bench over here, let's start tearing into it. Top end is all good to go, brand new piston, so we can just take that off, put it to the side, and then reinstall that right away because everything is fresh on there. There's the head, 
Still looks good. So there's just a couple 10 millimeters right here. We already went through the whole power valve system last video. And that all checked out. We can actually leave that on there and take it off of the piece down here. Cover. This one had all new gaskets as well. Everything was brand new. Lots of coolant coming out. off. I believe we greased that. Yeah. See how nice and easy that pops off now? Because we greased that gasket. That looks good. I got a brand new gasket kit for it, so we shouldn't need this one, but we'll save it just in case. Pays to grease the gasket. I see some metallic flakes in the oil though. Not liking that. Nut, washer, this whole thing can come off. It's gonna be bearing behind there, just like that. Put that on the clutch like that. Kickstart mechanism out of here. So for this one, just pop that. Like that. There we go. It's gonna have a spring and a washer behind there. Water pump gear can come out. Just like that. And we can get this detached from there. Now it'll just float. I have to get all these gears off. So this one has the dots that line up. Counterbalance gear and the crank gear. Now we've got kickstart gear right here. Take that off. There's a washer on there as well, right there. Not one on the back. You can see metallic flakes right there. So something's grinding. See that? I'm gonna quick inspect this area down here and see if anything's rubbing. Take out the ship shaft here. 
Doesn't look like anything's rubbing on the shift shaft at all. Those teeth look good. Same with this right here. I'm gonna really inspect and see what the shift mechanism looks like, see if it's rubbing. I don't think it is though, I'm not seeing any wear on anything. Yeah, there's no wear on the teeth at all. That looks really good. So the metal isn't coming from there. Wipe this. How much metallic is there? Something's grinding. Look at that. Off of here, Let's get Woodruff key. Take out. Just like that. I believe this side is all done. Catch the piston from the back side. There we go. Cylinder still looks perfect. Rod still feels good. This is where we thought the original problem was. That bolt and washer was missing the first time we tore this down. Washer off. That line lines up with the notch on the case for the stator.
balance gear should pop out of here. There we go. These bolts can pop out. Holy cow. All bearings still look good. Look, what was wearing down on the transmission here? Something had to have been. Oh yeah, look at this gear, right here. This one's getting worn down, see that? See that shiny metal right there? That's getting worn down. I'm guessing the gear right there is too. Yeah, that's getting worn down pretty good. You can see the, the finishes off of it. See all the flakes in there. Something was rubbing. Let's find out. Looking at this gear, you can see some pretty substantial rounding off. I don't know if that would be enough to cause our issue. You can see it's pretty rounded off on the corners here. See that? So that's one problem I found. And this butts up to it right here. Those gear dogs don't look bad. These don't look bad. They're not rounded off or anything. These are a little rounded too. You can see in here. But I mean, it's not like horrible. I don't think it'd be enough to slip out of gear. All of them are a little rounded off. Yeah, those are a little rounded off too. And everything's just a little rounded off. It's not terrible. But maybe that was enough to make it slip. We'll check out the other one. Not 
not seeing anything missing. Are you guys? Looks pretty good. All right, looking at the shift drum here. Not seeing any substantial wear at all. Nothing looks like it was rubbing. Everything looks good. You can see this fits in there nice and tight. Spring still tension really good. I'm not seeing any substantial wear on here. You can see a little discoloring on this gear, but teeth are still sharp, not rounded off at all. I'm just not seeing anything that would cause that big of a problem. Everything looks pretty good. These are pretty shiny right up here. The shift forks look like they were maybe rubbing a little bit here, here, and here. Same with this one. But those do move a lot, so we'll have to check the thickness of the shift forks compared to the, the used one we're getting in the mail. Because maybe those were just worn out and too skinny. All right, we just got the new transmission in the mail, or the, the used new one, I should say. Let's see if it looks good. It is the same. Pretty good there. Here are the shift forks. Shift drum. Everything's looking pretty much the same. I don't see anything that stands out too much. It looks pretty solid. Got the washers on here, that looks good. I mean, they're a little bit worn, but horrible. Not even close to as bad as the other ones you can see. So they definitely look better than the other ones, but there's a little wear to them. Looks pretty good. All right, so I just compared the two transmissions, the old one and the new one, and nothing really stands out. We measured the forks, and the thicknesses were both the same on the new and the old. The drum looked exactly the same. Nothing different about the drum. So everything matched up and looked the same. So <laughs> hopefully this fixes our problem, because everything is pretty much the same. It must just be something 
that's just a little bit off in the transmission gears. I don't know. We're gonna put the new one back in and uh, we're just gonna see what happens. I guess that's all we can really do at this point. All right, cases are all prepped. Let's start getting this transmission in. So first thing we're gonna do is get our spring. We'll guide here on. So this is gonna go like this. So you can see this is gonna go in between the shift drum grooves on the shift star and your pin. So the pin's gonna go right in here, just like that. You're gonna line that up with the groove on the shift star. You can see the pin in there. And your washer will hold that in place. And this will go on like that. All right, let's get this transmission in next. So the only tricky part about this is this gear can come off when you're putting it down like this. The other one stays on. So this is gonna get dropped in like this. Shift fork three, it's just three A on there. It's gonna go on this gear right in here. And you can take the shift drum out for this. Make it easier. It's gonna go right to here, just like that. Lock into place. All right, so this shift fork is shift fork number two. This is 2A on it. It's really hard to see. But that goes down first. It goes right into here. Just like that. And then there's shift fork one. Right here, again, pretty hard to see. It says 1A on it. That goes right into here. Just like that. These go into the grooves on the shift drum. Just like that. Now that should spin smoothly. You can change between the gears here. Okay. Everything is shifting good. All right, using some of that ultra black gasket maker. Alright, get these case halves together. I'm just want to lightly tap this.
Transmission still spins, crank spins, and we can get the bolts in. Alright, bolt and washer going down right here. I like to make sure that the transmission spins smoothly, crank spins smoothly, that's all good to go. So we've got our counterbalance shaft going in. Alright, so we've got the woodruff key in there, slid on the other counterbalance part here. This gear goes on like this over the woodruff key. washer and then you get your nut and then the crank gear go on like this spin that so spin this while pushing we'll slide into that crank seal there now this gear is going to have a dot. You see right there, it's going to line up with the dot right here on the counterbalance gear. So you want to put that in. Then you've got your other gear. No markings on that one washer, and then your nut, reverse thread. Alright, so this is spring loaded, single facing this way into the drum here. Shift shaft going in. No washer on the shift shaft. Just push right in. Middle gear lines up with the middle gear there. Stirrup mechanism going in. You've got your washer and spring still on there. That goes behind there. This gets wrapped around. And into here. Just like that. Get your starter gear going on. Washer. Get your circle up here. Alright, we got the bushing. The bearing. We just took this off as one piece. This can go on.
No. All right, you can see the tab for the lock washer is folded over onto the nut. Just line up with the notch on the case. Little drift key going in. Get here. It's a very thin amount. Cylinder going on. Get these rings lined up here. Torque specs on the cylinder nuts are 18 foot pounds to 20 foot pounds, and the smaller ones are 6 to 8. Crisscross pattern. Alright, we got the gasket all greased up. Now we can get the cover on. Cover, remember, this has to line up with the notch right there. So let's do that. Torque specs for the head, 20 foot pounds to 22 foot pounds. Crisscross pattern here.
All right, engine is all ready to be put back into the quad here. All right, hoses are all hooked up, cables are hooked up, wiring harness is hooked up. Let's get the kicker on. See if it kicks over smooth. <laughs> Hopefully it does. Hopefully it shifts through all the gears, because I'm probably not going to try to rebuild it again if it doesn't work. This is my last shot at it. Looks good right there. Kicks over smooth. All right, time to get cooling in. All right, time to get some oil in it. it takes 900 milliliters. All right, let's see if she fires up, and then the real test will be, does it shift? <laughs> see what happens here. Well, it runs good. It runs really good. Make sure there's no leaking. Doesn't look like there's leaking from anywhere. So we're good there. All right, will this thing still slip out of second gear? That is the question. I really, really hope it doesn't. We're back out at the land testing this thing for the third time. If this thing still slips out of second gear, this thing is going in the garbage. I am done with it. <laughs> oh, I really hope it shifts smoothly through all the gears and has no issues. Because I'm really sick of looking at this thing. 
All right, let's get this thing unloaded. Test it for the final time, hopefully.
thank God this thing is finally fixed. Shifts through every single gear smoothly, doesn't pop out of gear. Finally fixed. Oh, does that feel good? Shifts really smooth, really nice. So it must have been either the shift drum, the transmission, or the shift forks. Because that's everything we uh, replaced. So something was off in the old one. Not sure what it was. But uh, yeah, this one fixed it. Um, I do hear like a slight bog. So we're going to try to change out the main jet in the carb. And uh, probably put a smaller one in. Alright, let's get this main jet out of the carb here. See what's in there. We'll probably drop it down just a little bit. It's not too boggy. But it'd be nice to get it nice and uh, crispy here. It's 152. We might have to order one up. I'll look around for like a 148. All right, I was reading this jet backwards. The original jet in there is a 250. And I actually found one just like it. It's a 240. So we're gonna put the 240 in, see what happens here. Got the uh, the two forty main in there. Let's see what happens. Changing the main jet from the 250 to the 240 definitely helped a lot. Um, still not perfect. I'd like it a little bit better, but I mean, it's it's pretty good. Um, I have to remember it is a 250, so it's not going to go as fast as like a 400 or 500, obviously. But I'd like it to be a little bit snappier on that top end. And you guys can probably hear it in the video. There's just like a slight, slight bog at top end. I'd like it to rev out a little bit higher there at top end. So... We might drop it down to a 230. I'm gonna do some research and see what we're supposed to be running with a ported cylinder and a, what kind of pipe is this? FTZ pipe. And I believe that's an FMF silencer on there. So we'll have to look up the jetting there. We might play with the needle a little bit too and uh, make sure that's properly adjusted. I might go one notch up on the needle clip to lower that needle so that less fuel gets in is what the plan probably will be and then we'll put a new plug in test the plug and make sure everything's good but the tire went flat so i think we're gonna have to end the video there so hopefully you guys enjoyed the process of rebuilding this thing 
and getting it to shift properly. It's been a process for sure. Um, rebuilding this engine twice, um, splitting the cases twice, a lot of hours were put into this thing. But uh, it turned out pretty decent. I'm happy with the way it runs, I'm happy with the way it shifts, and uh, it's finally where it's you know supposed to be. So we're gonna fix that flat tire, and uh, this thing should be good to go. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video, and until next time, we are out.